uh, Blueback opens with these amazing views of coral reefs. In general, how is your relationship with the ocean? I love the ocean. I mean, uh, that's why I have a huge reason why I wanted to do this film. I think it's, I mean, Rob always described it to me as a, as a love poem to the ocean. And uh, I thought that was, that was great. Like anything that, you know, reminds us of how important and how special and how beautiful it is, 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 uh, you know, is, is really great. And what's about you, Eric? Do you like fishing as much as your character, Mecca, does it? <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I did a little bit of fishing as a, as a kid, um, but I, I love the character of Mecca. I love the way it was, was written. I love how kind of mysterious and mischievous he is and what that represents to, to, young, to young Abby. And I think, you know, kids are always drawn to those kind of characters um and i had a lot of fun the two young actors who played young abby who i got to do some some scenes with it was it was wonderful and young young ilsa was her first film um so that that was uh it was great to be a part of that have you ever gone uh, snorkeling yeah, oh, yeah 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 i mean there's it, we're I in went sydney last week. did you yeah and yeah. i saw a blue groper i saw wow. a few blue gropers actually so yeah I, I, but, and yeah. please. <laughs> no, yes, I have been, and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what's about uh, scuba diving? I'm not very familiar with, uh, you know, the water activities, but I know they are very different, right? Yeah, so I hadn't done scuba diving before this film, um, so I did do a sort of crash course, um, and it was great. Like I. I had a very surreal moment when I was under the water and I'd been there for about 20 minutes and I realized I'd never been out of my element for so long. Um, and yeah, it was, it was surreal, but yeah, it was great. Uh, you looked uh, natural, so I guess you enjoy it, right? I do. Yes. Thank you. Um, and what's about uh, Tim Winton's short novel? Were you familiar with the novel uh, before you landed the role? I was familiar with it, but I hadn't read it. But it is a big part of our, um, it's in our school curriculum here in Australia. And, uh, you know, I think it's a lot of young people are really familiar with it. And it's uh, a really important novel. Eric, you described your character uh, as mischievous. Uh, why is he called uh, Mad, though? Mad Mecca? Well, I think he's just, he's a real loner, you know, and, and he, he gets up to a little bit of, little bit of trouble. And, and I, I always love it when a, a name says something about a character we never really fully, fully explore. We just know there's something a bit dark and a bit, a bit mysterious about him. And I think that's what that's what you know young young abby you know finds kind of interesting about him and then obviously something happens during during the film which i won't won't give away but ends up having a big impact on on young abby um abby uh, young abby but in general abby of all her ages has a very special friend under the sea a wild blue groper uh, what can you tell uh, us about uh, her relationship with uh, that fish, Mia? Um, well, I think he's a bit of a, you know, very symbolic of her relationship with the ocean and, and also with how it connects to her relationship with her mum. You know, her mum growing up with a mother who's an activist and whose whole sort of life has been devoted to caring for this um, area of the coast that they grew up in. Uh, and, you know, Dora is the one who introduces Abby to, to Blueback and really sort of sparks this um, deep sort of uh, care and, and connection to, you know, all everything under the underwater. Um, so I think that's sort of the, the beginning of something for Abby it's, that sort of, you know, propels her on her journey. It's interesting that you two don't interact with each other in the movie as only the younger version of Abby gets to meet uh, Mecca. 
But did you see each other on the set at all? No, we didn't. We because we shot in the pandemic, we were both uh, in isolation for two weeks, and I think we missed each other by a week. Um, I had just gotten out of isolation, as I think Eric had just gone into isolation, and it was so. No, we we we'd heard a lot about each other for a few years through Robert, the director. Um, and then only met at the premiere. Yeah, and, this, and today's the first time we've been on camera together. <laughs> oh, oh, that's a huge honor then. Thank yeah. you very much. <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> and Eric, uh, this is not the first time uh, you work with uh, Robert Connolly, um, as you two already work on the drop. How is it, you know, to join forces again? Yeah, look, it's always it's always great to to collaborate and we're on to our fourth or fifth project together. And um, I love working with Rob. He has a you know really wonderful, positive, infectious energy. And we were able to assemble really great people on our projects and, and the very like-minded people who love working on this, this size of, of film, which we all kind of cut our teeth on. And it feels really special to, to be making films at, at this level. They're very difficult to make, but they're, um, they're really important to the ecosystem of, of, of film, you know, so get, getting to watch Robert work on, on this movie was amazing. It's incredibly physical and very difficult for a director to make a film like this. And he just uh, took it in his stride and the crew were absolutely incredible. And it's very, very wild and rugged where we, where we shot this film in, in Western Australia, a place called Bremer Bay. It's very, very beautiful, but but yeah, it's really, really difficult shooting on the, on the water. So to see see that firsthand was wonderful. Yeah, it is. It looks very beautiful indeed. And uh, I can guess that it was pretty difficult to uh, shoot there. Uh, what was your biggest challenge in general um, in, in this movie? Mm, well, I think the boats. I, I mean, if, you know, uh, it's not hard to get a little bit queasy, you know, when you're out on the water <laughs> for many hours and you're just slowly sort of rocking and, and also just coordinating the, you know, the boat that the camera's on and the boat that we're on and the conditions change in 10 minutes. And um, yeah, there were quite a few days where, you know, it was just like wild. <laughs> I mean, not, you know, not too crazy, but it, it's just take, you know, filmmaking's hard anyway. And then you just put it on a, surface that's uncontrollable and goes to the next level of com complex. And uh, what's about you, Eric? I just had to give myself enough time to grow that hair and beard. <laughs> <laughs> um, I really loved that scene where you came up at the party, you know, you brought, you were actually the party, you bought the fry works and everyone started enjoying it after you showed up. <laughs> Yeah, it's a great scene. Yeah, that. Rob actually wrote that. Um, was very late in the piece. We realised that that there wasn't quite enough of maca, and he he wanted to work out a way of of injecting maca into into the community because he's quite mysterious in the fact that he's always on his own on on the boat. So he he literally Rob wrote that mm -hmm. scene to just kind of in, inject a bit of energy and 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 show a sense of community at at night time. But it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. We only had I think the one night to to get all that to get all that shot and some fireworks and so forth but yeah it, it does it adds to the mystery of 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 mad macker and and i love that he's a bit of a loner you know and it sort of comes across he just kind of appears out of the dark with this you know bag full of fireworks mm. again to kind of like entertain <laughs> and be a bit mischievous you both work on different national and international projects um, I would like to ask you in general, how has the Australian movie scene changed and grown in the, these decades working within it? Mm. What do you reckon? Well, it, I feel really proud that we're still able to make movies of, of, of this size. They're movies that, you know, me and I both kind of started our career on and it's, they're very difficult to make. I mean, they're, it's hard to make these films anywhere in, in the world, particularly, you know, in a, in a country like Australia. So, but these, these films, they, they serve a really important um, 
function, you know, in the ecosystem of, of movies, both for, for, for actors and crew, but also for, for viewers, you know. Um, so it feels it feels very special and I never take it for granted to get these kind of films made. It, it always feels really special and feels like you're pulling off some kind of minor minor miracle, you mm. know. Blueback uh, Blue shares an important environmental message about, you know, preserving the species of fish in oceans, but in general, preserving oceans and our environment. Uh, what should we do as a society to preserve our nature or nature in general? Sorry, because it's not necessarily our. Well, I think um there's so many different ways of, of contributing and um being you know a positive part of of uh you know a, of a community and, and of the global community but i always come back to this um you know idea that a really easy way that kind of everybody can contribute is to um you know do something that increases the um, biodiversity of your your local area, which is sort of what this film is about. I mean, she's really just protecting. I mean, Dora is the the mother is really put her life into sort of protecting the bay that that she kind of grew up in, and and I think that's you know, I mean, even that's quite a big thing. But if if there's a you know, yeah, some small way in which you can you know increase your own um, biodiversity in your area. I think that's, yeah, that's, that's one thing. Um, Eric, forgive me, but uh, I have to ask you this. You starred in some of my childhood movies. You portrayed the Hulk and then uh, Hector in, in Troy. So how is it to fight with Brad Pitt? <laughs> uh, it, was, it, was, it was a lot of fun. You know, that movie was very, very physical and a massive massive challenge but I, I look back on it very very fondly and um, I love it when I run into people who were really young when the film came out and it became something they studied at school or it made them aware of the Iliad and classic literature and um, and so forth but to get a chance to play a character like that you know it's a once in a lifetime and um, yeah never 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 taken it for granted I, I always you know I get a thrill when when someone says they, they saw it as a as a young young person and it was a, a big film for them so yeah it's, it's it feels great and i know that you have been already asked this question on different occasion but is there any hope at all to see your hulk back now that the multiverse is a thing no nah, look i think i think my body of work since since then speaks to the kind of films that i like to do so i yeah i can't see that happening yeah, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. I, that's the answer that I was expecting, to be honest. But I had to ask it. And uh, still, Mia, um, you have an uh, upcoming project in uh, Club Zero. Can you tell us uh, something about your work there? Yeah, it's um, the director, Jessica Hausner, who I really, I really admire. And I, I really liked the story. I mean, it's completely different to this, but in the same way, kind of looks at the anxiety that young people are feeling due to like our changing climate and our, and the world that they're inheriting um, and the sort of vulnerability that's that's opening up because of because of that anxiety. And so, yeah, I, I love that project. I love the script. So we'll see how, how it comes together. Eric, uh, you too have an upcoming uh, movie in uh, Berlin. Uh... Uh, nobody, right? Yes, yes. I made that um, last year with with Jordan Scott, who was uh, wonderful to work with. She did a, a wonderful adaptation of the the book by Nicholas Hogg, Tokyo. Um, it was it was great to to get back to Berlin and 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 work there again. I absolutely loved it. So I'm looking forward to seeing it. And Mia, if you could pick uh, a special uh, feature or a special uh, you know trait or of of uh, uh, Abby, uh, what is it that really impressed you about her? Um, I think her her drive and and her kind of heart, her her ability to really care. I think and and want to make a difference and and be a positive force in the world. I think, yeah. 
Have you ever had a special relationship uh, with uh, an animal, like uh, you know the the same way Abby has uh, with uh, blueback? Uh, yeah, I guess like with my dog, I you know I absolutely love my dog, and um, you know he was like my first sort of significant pet, uh, and I feel like since I have that relationship, I sort of see him in every, every animal. <laughs> I know that, that I, I realized that when I, I sort of like just now just see him in it, all these animals. Um, but yeah, so yeah, I guess I have to say my dog. What's his name? June. June. A very, very good choice. So I finished my questions before I let you go. Do you have any last messages you would like to share with us today? No, I just really hope you enjoy the film. It's it's a lot of lot of fun to 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 watch and has a has a, a beautiful energy to it. So yeah, would 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 encourage your audience to 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 go and see. It's a great great family film. Thank you very much for giving us a little bit of your time today. Best of luck with all your projects, and hopefully I will hear again from you in the future. And congrats on uh, Blueback. Thanks very much. Thanks very much. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. You too.